Writing Lewis Structures, Formal Charges. What happens when you have more than one possible way to arrange the electrons for Lewis structure? This is often the case when multiple bonding is present. How do we decide what arrangement of the electrons is most likely to be true? In a situation like this, the formal charge can be helpful in determining which structure is the most likely. In the formal charge system, we assume that the electrons are shared exactly equally between the atoms. In some ways, this is similar to the system of oxidation numbers, where we assume that the electrons are totally transferred and all bonds are ionic. In a sense, these two systems are opposite ends of a spectrum, where real bonding is somewhere in between. Neither system corresponds to the real world exactly, but both systems can give us insight into the real world. If we take the molecule CO2, for example, we have 16 valence electrons. With the carbon in the middle, we have four electrons on the two single carbon oxygen bonds, leaving 12 electrons, which are just enough to fill the two oxygen atoms but leaving the carbon with only four electrons in the two bonds. To fill the carbon, we need to make two more bonds, but there are two different ways to do this. In one, each oxygen atom uses a pair of its electrons to make the bond, making two double bonds. In the other, four electrons come from one of the oxygen atoms and none from the other, producing a single bond and a triple bond. We have two equivalent structures for this, one each for the triple bond to each of the oxygen atoms. To determine the formal charge of each structure, we first draw each of the structures. To assign the formal charge, we count the number of electrons assigned to each atom. For each atom, count the number of unshared electrons on the atom then add half the number that are being shared. In the left structure, each of the oxygen atoms has two unshared pairs and two from the double bond, for a total of six electrons. The carbon has two from each double bond, for a total of four electrons. In the structure on the right, the left oxygen has seven electrons, six from the unshared pairs and one from the bond. The oxygen on the right has five, two from the unshared pair and three from the triple bond. And the carbon has four, three from the triple bond and one from the single bond. To determine the formal charge for an atom, we subtract the number of assigned electrons from the number of valence electrons for the atom. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons and each carbon atom has four valence electrons. In the left structure, with two double bonds, the number of assigned electrons and the number of valence electrons is the same for each atom, so each has a formal charge of zero. In the other structure, the left oxygen atom has a formal charge of minus one, the right oxygen atom has a formal charge of plus one, and the carbon has a formal charge of zero. Just as an aside, the sum of the formal charges of the atoms must equal the charge of the species. In both cases here, it does. Deciding which structure is best comes down to which structure best meets the following standards in this order. A. It follows the octet rule, that is, eight electrons for each atom except hydrogen which needs only two. B. It has the fewest charges, that is, the lowest numbers in the charges. And C. It puts the negative charge on the most electronegative element. The structure that best meets these criteria is the one that has the greatest contribution to the overall structure. If more than one structure meets these standards, 
then the structures contribute equally to the structure of the molecule. In the case of the carbon dioxide, the left structure with two double bonds is the preferred structure. Let's look at the molecule N2O, which has the two nitrogen atoms connected to each other. There are three possible structures. One has a single bond between the nitrogen atoms and a triple bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. The second has double bonds in each place. And the third has the triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms. In the left structure, the left nitrogen is assigned seven electrons. With five valence electrons, there's a formal charge of minus two. The center nitrogen is assigned four electrons for a formal charge of plus one. And the oxygen is assigned five electrons with six valence electrons for a formal charge of plus one. For the center structure, the left nitrogen is assigned six electrons, center four, and the oxygen six for formal charges of minus one, plus one, and zero. For the right structure, the left nitrogen is assigned five electrons, the center one four, and the oxygen seven for formal charges of zero, plus one, and minus one. So which is the best structure? All three structures follow the octet rule, rule A. We can eliminate the left structure because it has a formal charge of minus two on one atom and the other structures do not. That's rule number two. Both of the others have formal charges of plus one, zero, and minus one. Which is preferred? The third rule says that the negative charge is on the most electronegative element, which is oxygen in this case. So, the preferred structure has a triple bond between the nitrogen atoms. There are two problems to do on the problem sheet for this part of the lesson.